well, welcome to my first ever video blog or vlog, as I believe uh, the professionals call it. So, first month that uh, I'm covering is is the month of April. Now, sadly, I haven't had that much fishing time in April, uh, and I've got some good excuses for why that is. Firstly, work, dreaded work. We have to do it, don't we? I've uh, been mega busy with work. I've had a lot of meetings and also uh, I've had to go abroad. I've had job interviews to conduct in Poland. I had the Shelton's Open Day to attend and represent Fox. Uh, did that alongside Essex's favourite carpenter, Steve Spurgeon and uh, Mark Pitchers. That was a great event, really well attended. I always enjoy doing it. It's my uh, local tackle shop and you know, I've been using it since I started fishing when I was a kid so always good to go to that shop what else is on my list of excuses of why i haven't done loads of fishing uh done some socializing with my old schoolmates been to see a band and have an indian with them <laughs> Um, I've also been busy with my stock pond. Back in the winter I uh, acquired a lease on a stock pond and uh, put some fish in there and spent uh, a couple of weekends uh, making up bales of barley straw um, and also um, putting netting across to stop cormorants and stuff so that's taken up a fair bit of my time and uh, yeah Unfortunately, it's just meant that I haven't had loads and loads of time to do my own fishing in, in April. That said, I uh, did manage to get out for a couple of sessions. Um, right at the start of the month, I went to uh, what would be my target venue for the spring, which is the Big Ski Pit. For those of you who have seen Guest Sessions 2 with Jim Wilson, uh, it's the pit that we filmed that on. Um, I knew at the start of April it would be a bit bit too early for, for catching fish out of there, but I did... Uh, did hope to use it as a recce trip and maybe uh, see see a few fish or find a few areas that would be worth baiting but it turned out to be quite an uneventful uh, 24 hours there but uh, probably the most enjoyable thing of the whole session was the sunset that evening it's a beautiful big old piece of water and you get some fantastic sunsets there um, i'm hoping as as we get into may and the weather warms up that I can do more time there. I got uh, very lucky on that lake last year, caught a couple of 40s and some stunning other fish. And I'm, uh, I'm hoping that history can repeat itself this spring. And that's where I'm gonna concentrate most of my efforts until they spawn, which I guess will be around the middle of June if last year's anything to go by. And I do also plan the odd trip um, on the pit next door, which is a bit smaller, full of snags, very shallow, but also got some big fish in it. and. Uh, I, uh, I will do the odd trip there, but predominantly the, the spring is going to be on the, on the ski pit. I could have actually stayed on and done a third night over the bank holiday weekend, but having done two, uh, I was ready for home. The following day on Bank Holiday Monday, myself and Abby, my partner, we were going to select our new dog. Um, we were really excited about it, so I decided to go home early, have a night at home with Abby, and then we were up on the Monday morning and on our way to go and pick our new Fox Red Labrador. Uh, when we got there, um, we had four bitches to pick from. Not something that I often have ever had the opportunity to boast about. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, four lovely uh, pups to choose from and basically uh, one puppy in particular walked straight up to Abby when she was sat on the floor with her legs crossed, climbed up onto her lap and fell asleep and I thought she'll do for me, low maintenance, just wants to sleep, proper chilled, that's the kind of dog that I want when it comes fishing with me, not one that's going to be bounding around on the banks and creating loads of disturbance. Abby obviously was smitten with her too so we, we selected her and we decided on the name Piper. Uh, we would have loved to have taken her home that day, but unfortunately it's too early. We had to wait another four weeks. So hopefully in uh, vlog two, um, you'll be getting more acquainted with Piper because we'll be able to bring her home. 
and uh, yeah, and I think it'll probably be vlog free before she's uh, had all of her injections and she's actually allowed to come on the bank for the first time. And that's something that I am really looking forward to having a little carp dog on the bank with me. So, I had two trips planned for the end of April that I was really looking forward to. Um, both of them were sort of uh, things that have been booked in for a very long time. So, as you do uh, as an angler, you kind of constantly checking the, check the uh, calendar and counting down the days for, for exciting trips. The first one we had was the Fox Consultant Social. Last year we did it on a lovely syndicate lake down in Essex and I was very fortunate enough to, to catch a few fish to high 30s. Got to see Scott Day catch a lovely 40 pounder. We had a great time and I think all the lads were really looking forward to getting together again and getting back out. For this year, Harry had arranged for us to film on the Birch Lake, which is on the old mill complex near Market Raisin in Lincolnshire. In the, in the weeks leading up to the Birch trip, I was, when any spare time I had in the evenings where I wasn't away with work or doing things with Abby, I was getting prep ready for the trip. So that involved re-spoiling my reels, um, rigging up my 10 foot uh, three pound EOS rods. Because Birch is a small lake and there's not really any real big casts, I'd set in my mind I was gonna fish with 10 foot rods three pound. And you know, if I was lucky enough to hook one of the big fish in there, it'd be lovely to play them on a light 10 foot rod. So rigged them up and um, yeah, also did a bit of bait prep a few days before the trip. Um, got some bottled water. With all that prep done, um, it was time to set the alarm nice and early for the Tuesday morning for the trip up north to Old Mill. First port of call on the morning of the social was for us to all meet up at the 10 Acre Cafe just up the road from the fishery. We had a big fry up, nice brew together, uh, great for everybody to, to see each other. Some of us hadn't seen each other for several months. So real nice to uh, spend that morning together, eating some nice greasy fry up and uh, also doing the draw for the, for the swims for the week. Now, I don't think it would be fair to cover the cafe without talking about the little incident that I experienced whilst at the cafe. Um, Seems that the locals eating their breakfast didn't quite appreciate me not shutting the door behind me. Although I did shut the door behind me, it just decided not to close and slowly opened itself as I walked through the cafe. I was screamed at by two people uh, telling me to close that effing door three times. Um, so I closed the door, I apologised, tried to calm them down um, and tried to assure them that uh, some of the terrorist attacks that had recently happened in the world were slightly more uh, worthwhile to get angry about than, uh, than a cafe door swinging open. So yeah, made some friends with the locals straight away whilst up in North Lincolnshire. Um, and yeah, gave all the guys uh, something to uh, take the mickey out of me about uh, whilst we ate our breakfast. So with uh, breakfast eaten, we commenced the draw um, and uh, yeah, from a personal point of view, I drew a peg which they call, I think they call it the end on the spit or the end on the point, and it's basically the last swim on the point that separates the old lake from the new lake, as, the, as uh, Birch is sort of two lakes joined together. Uh, and I was really happy with it because it fished into the old lake and the sort of reconnaissance, I can't even say that word, I don't know if that's the right way to pronounce it, Recon Recon reconnaissance, sounds right. Uh, the reconnaissance that I'd done leading up to the, the social said that with the weather conditions that were forecast for our trip, being in the old lake was definitely the side to be in. So I was absolutely made up to draw the old lake. And this particular swim that I'd got had plenty of its own water and it looked pretty good. At this stage in the month, I would say we're, we're I think the third or fourth week of April, I still haven't actually had a carp to film for my first vlog. Thankfully, I was bivvied up in the peg next to Tom Maker, 
and he was on a shed full of fish um, and it didn't take him long to catch an old mill uh, carp, only one of the small stockies in the lake, but it was, a, it was great. It was the first fish of the session. It got us off to a flying start and it meant I could actually film a carp for the vlog, albeit not one of my own. This is the first carp ever to appear on the Lou Dog vlog and I can't think of a better angler to be holding it than, than me. Than, uh, How cute. Teabag, as he's known these days. And what a fish as well. Awesome it's, fish. Uh, yeah. Nice and short, nice and fat. If ever there was Just a carp like that... Uh, it's Tom's fish anyway, by the yeah. way. So if anyone comes to Old Mill and catches it, <laughs> Tom's fish, you saw it here first, £11.5 ounces. This is a fish that's actually been born and bred in the lake. One An of the original. Offspring. Proper original. That's what I'm here for. So with Tom's fish uh, photographed and filmed and returned, I think everybody was feeling confident going into that first night that there might be a fish or two caught around the lake. I certainly felt confident in my peg, um, but sadly I awoke on the first morning or the second morning, just depending on how you look at it. For me, it's the first morning because we arrived in the in the afternoon and started fishing in the afternoon, and then it was the first morning. Um, I woke up to a beautiful sunrise. Sadly, the alarms had remained quiet all night, but as I made the first brew of the day and I watched the water, started to see the odd fish show in my water and just into the water that was Chili's, as Chili was sort of fishing on the on the bank opposite me. The day went by very quick. We're so busy doing filming and Tom was catching fish and we were, we were yeah, socialising and, and sort of goes by in a bit of a blur. But just before dark, I think probably an hour before dark, I got a bite and I was absolutely buzzing to, to be finally attached to an old mill fish. Now there's a, this lake has several 50s, over, I think over a dozen 40s at the right time of year. When you're playing a fish in there, your knees start to knock because you just don't know what it could be. Uh, it turned out to be an epic battle. The fish really, really fought hard. It had real deep margins. It kited around the point to my right. I had to walk out onto the point and, and play the fish. And this point's only quite narrow. And I had Harry there with a camera. I had Tom Maker there with a net. I think Andy Maker with a camera. I think Mozza was there with a camera. It was all a bit claustrophobic. I just want to try and land this fish. I've got cameras everywhere. I've got Tom Maker being uh, his useful uh, self, threatening to knock it off with a net like <laughs> he, he claims I did once for him. Um, and then just on the other bank, I had Chili and Pictures also filming on their their cameras for their own vlogs of me doing it. So it was it was all a bit bit uh, bit surreal, really. It's not really my normal fishing. But uh, anyway, after a, 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 this battle. A big fish came up to the surface. It was obvious. It was one of Birch Lake's real special ones. It's going to come up now. It's going to come yeah. all the way Come on, Tom. Up. A bit more line Come on, Tom. Are you not got enough line in Yeah. Come on, Tom. Come on, Tom. Yes, Tom. Yes, Tom. Yes, Tom. Yes, Tom. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. That is That's big. That's massive. <laughs> oh. What a drama. Oh my God. What are we saying? Um, and Tom, to be fair to him, made no mistake with the net and he uh, slipped it under a proper chunk. With it in the net, it's high fives and hugs all round with the guys who had decided to um, be on this little point with me. Um, and then we, uh, yeah, we set about weighing the fish up and getting all the footage done. Fish turned out to be one known as shoulders. Uh, and it went over 46 pounds. So I was absolutely over the moon. Get my first fish of the year for the Fox Social with all my good mates there. Um, couldn't have been happier. Uh, proper, proper result. And yeah, actually meant I got at least one carp on my first ever video blog. I'd caught at that stage the biggest of the uh, of this of the session, and I was feeling a little bit smug of myself, you know. I thought, yeah, I hadn't caught anything for the first 24 hours, but bang, in I go, biggest fish of the trip, big fish angler. I ain't here for the small ones, and all that. Well, I think that lasted for about one minute, maybe two minutes, before Harry's alarm signalled a bite, and he went on to land a 51 pounder. Yeah, 51.4. Yay! 
<laughs> Go on, hey! So thanks for that, Harry. You made me feel, uh, feel good for two minutes. But I was absolutely buzzing to see Harry. That's a new PB for him. He was so stoked to catch that fish. And he, you know, he's there to work a lot harder than some of us because he's there filming these socials. We just get to fish and do a bit to camera every now and again. He's up at first light filming all day until sort of dark and even in dark if people are catching. So for him to catch a fish from a little bay that nobody really fancied at the draw of that size was, was brilliant. Um, I'm not gonna go through the whole session. It would take too much time and there's gonna be a film coming out about it. Um, but from a personal point of view, the 46 turned out to be my only fish. Um, but the lads chipped in with loads of great fish. And in the end, we ended up with a 50, four 40s and 11 30s. Uh, plus 20s, doubles and the odd single as well. I think over 30 fish were banked in three days. Incredible fishing and I can't recommend Birch Lake and the Old Mill Complex highly enough. There's two other great lakes on the complex that are available for day ticket fishing. Um, yeah, so if you're looking for a good day ticket fishery in the Lincolnshire area, definitely look up Old Mill Lakes. It served us very, very well. So with the old mill session done and dusted, I was back home on the Friday afternoon and I only had a couple of days to get my kit all sorted out, ready for the following Monday when I would be heading to Norfolk to fish on the majestic Spitfire pool. I was going with my good mate Coops and uh, it would be his first trip to the lake. However, I'd uh, previously fished it two other times before. It's been a very kind venue to me in the past. I've had um, a fish called the Wood Common from there twice, uh, over 50 pound. Uh, I've also had 30 pound mirrors and um, a couple of 20s as well. It's only an acre in size, um, but it also only has 14 carp. So it's, it's not an easy lake at all. People think one acre, it must be really easy, but it couldn't be further from the truth. Uh, in fact, the, the pool opened for fishing this year at the start of March, and by the time we were going at the end of April, it had only put three fish on the bank. Um, having been to the lake before, I knew that the weather plays a massive part. If you get it nice, hot and, uh, and sunny, the carp come out from the weed beds, uh, they're visible on the top, you can watch them swim around and study their patrol routes and you can set traps for them. If it's cloudy, windy, wet, cold, they just hold up in the weed and it can be very, very frustrating fishing because you just don't see them, you can't find them and you're fishing blind. Sadly, the weather forecast for our trip was not good. It was mainly cloudy, cold northerly winds, uh, not what you want. But there was a few, a few days at the start of the week where it said it was going to be sunnier than the others. So I'd sort of spoke to Coops and we, we knew that if we were going to catch something, it would probably be at the start of the week rather than at the end of the week. We, uh, we walked around the pool and uh, quite bizarrely, within 10 minutes of walking around, we actually saw the wood common swim straight past the front of a swim and just waddled off and disappeared into the weed. And I thought that was kind of nice to see an old friend as it were, it was like it was saying hello. The lake was as weedy as I've ever, ever seen it. It was like middle of summer, yet we're still in April. And I'd say probably 80% of the total surface area of the pool was covered in weed uh, and unfishable. So we knew it wasn't going to be an easy task and the half of the lake where we'd seen the fish was definitely the, the more weed free half and it was the half we both really wanted. Unfortunately, I lost the toss and uh, yeah, that was it really. I felt quite deflated because Coop's got that half and I had to have the other half, but not to, uh, not to be too beaten. I had a little lead around, it was so weedy, I decided the best thing to do was to wade the margins and, and create my own clear spot uh, and present my baits by hand close in. So sat about doing that on the Monday afternoon, made a couple of spots, lowered little hinge rigs in with white pop-ups, exactly the same rigs as what I've used before on the lake to, to catch the fish that I've caught. And uh, yeah, went into that first night I wouldn't have said mega confident, but I was happy. I knew the rigs were presented, and if the fish did come out of the weed and sort of venture around, I felt I'd have half a chance. Um, at first light, that, that 
first morning as it were on the Tuesday morning I, I got a, a stuttery take just a few bleeps uh, I actually thought it might have been the big common again because that's the kind of bite you get off the big common and literally this fish just came in with a ball of weed I scooped it up and I was really hoping as bizarre as it sounds that it wasn't going to be that particular common because I'd love to see Coops catch that I'm not one for repeats uh, thankfully it wasn't that it was a mirror um, but it was probably the, the smallest or the second smallest uh, mirror in the lake. There's uh, 12 originals in the lake and then there's two stockies that were put in in February and uh, neither of them had been caught up until our trip but there in the, in the fold of my net was one of the two stockies, a lovely little mirror with some big scales on its side um, and whilst it wasn't one of the big ones I was hoping for, you know my main target from that pool is the long common that's been uncaught for two years now and is more than likely over 50 pounds now um, whilst it wasn't that fish I was really happy to catch one of the mirrors one of the stockies because it was its first ever capture um, and it's nice to you know to to see the future of the pool secure dropped it in the sling got the rod back out and then I sent the owner Rich a message just to let him know that I'd caught a caught one of his stockies and uh, in the message I said it, it's a, it looks a bonny little fish Later that day, Rich said to me I could, could name that fish as it's its first ever capture and, I, and it felt fitting to call it Bonnie because that was my first thought. When I looked at it there in, in the net, I thought that's a Bonnie one. So that fish will forevermore be called Bonnie. Um, and to be honest with you, that was the highlight of the trip, that capture, because for the next five nights, I caught nothing. I saw no fish in my half of the lake whatsoever. Uh, the weather got colder every day, the fish got less active every day. I did see the long common a couple of times, but it was in, in a weed bed that was in Coops' half of the lake, and it was well out of it, the zone where you could present a bait. The, the fish just were so deep into this weed, you couldn't, you couldn't present a bait there. It's so thick, uh, and it's got blanket weed all motted in amongst it. You just wouldn't be even be able to crash a solid bag into it. It's just not possible. The fish were safe. Um, there's so much natural food in that pool. The carp really do not need to eat anglers bait. And um, yeah, you're basically fishing a single up bait with, with the odd freebie around it, just trying to nick a bite on there. They, they don't need the bait. And these fish, all week we were there, they were happy sat in that weed, eating naturals, staying in the warmth, the, the warmth of the, you know, the weed. It's like acting like a thermal blanket for them rather than coming out into the more exposed areas where the cool breeze was hitting. So yeah, unfortunately, Coops returned um, fishless and I came back with just that one, one fish. But like I say, I can't be too disappointed. When there's only 14 carp in the lake, you can't really pick which one you're gonna catch. And that was only the fourth fish that the lake had done. Um, and then the following week after we left, there was no fish out either. And now the pool's shut for the summer for, for spawning. So for that first half of the year, eight weeks fished, only four carp banked and I feel privileged that I'd caught one of those fish. And that concludes my first month of the vlog. Um, bit of a mixed month, not done lots and lots of fishing, not my own fishing as such. Um, but, you know, I've had a 46 pounder and I caught fish out of Spitfire, so it hasn't been too bad. But yeah, it's been an enjoyable month, really busy with work, spending time with mates both on the bank and away from the bank. Um, and yeah, not a bad start to the year really. Nice to get a 40 in April, that's for sure. So looking forward to May. But for now, that's the end of the first vlog. Hope you've enjoyed it uh, and hope to see you next month. Please feel free to put comments below on the video. Give us feedback, what you'd like to see more of, what you'd like to see less of. Really happy to get feedback. Um, and yeah, if there's any questions you wanna know about rigs or bait or anything that I'm doing on the target venues I'm fishing, put the questions and we'll try and answer them as, as much as we can. But for now, wish you all the best and hope you have a good weekend.